Michael Forrest and welcome to It's Go Time. Now before we get going, I'm going to ask if you can all remain off this raised up platform here. This way nobody blocks this display here. Uh, this includes the top of the speakers, the top of the display itself as that can be distracting. There are people who like to stand on top of Shrub here and that's completely fine. He's cool with it. He does not mind whatsoever. Some people like to take my tools there. Actually, I forgot to put them out. So I'm going to take a moment really quickly to, uh, to do that right now like this. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, real professional. I had to re-enter the space and that kind of doesn't do that. But yeah, people will try to take the tools. Some people like to take selfies with them and feel free if that's what you want to do. You can't see the display as well, but people do like to do that. And if that's you, that's completely fine. Now, uh, if I can direct your attention to the menu wheel in your lower left, you're going to notice at the very top of that menu wheel is a microphone icon. If that microphone icon is clear, that means we can hear what's happening in your environment. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn that to red. And now once it's red, that means that you're muted. Uh, and it's because you won't be able to hear anything happening in your environment. So if somebody comes in and asks you, are you still on that thing? Feel free to answer them because we're not going to hear that. Also, you'll avoid social ruin back at the campfire. If you have like a dog barking or a phone ringing, you won't become known as the avatar that started barking during go time or, you know, suddenly ringing during the event. Um, but just because you're muted doesn't mean you can't express yourself. You can and should use this uh, pink cheek smiley face in your emoji, in your emoji panel that'll open up when you press it in your menu wheel there. Uh, and when you have it to give you a a lot of different options to express yourself. So if, for example, I say something really moving and it touches you right here and you start feeling it build up, you could just let it out, let it slow up. And maybe it breaks the glass above me, right? And maybe some ninjas drop down behind me, but they're not ninjas at all. They're backup dancers. You can show, you know, how impressed you are. And, you know, as I break in this song here, you can just uh, throw up the applause that I live for, you know, and drink that in. If uh, you can smile to say yes, you can frown to say no. You can do this tongue sticky outy thing to uh, indicate laughter. You could also raise your hand up like this. Uh, and if you do this, this isn't the same thing as asking a question. We will be taking questions at the end. But if you do this, this is to get my attention. And if I see one of you do it, I'm probably going to keep on going. Uh, but if I see like five of you doing it at one time, I know something's gone wrong. Like maybe you can't hear me or maybe this display is bursting into flames. It actually happened once. My moms have a sense of humor. Uh, and yeah, so that, that can totally happen. Now, GoTime is an event for Go users, but all are welcome. So if you're on another device, feel free to stick around. You might learn something about the Go that'll help fellow Go members uh, in the community. There's a lot of Go users in Allspace, uh, you know, and a lot of Quest users, and a lot of, you know, all different devices are represented in Allspace. And uh, if somebody's stuck with some information and you hear it here today, you might be able to help them. That's always a good thing. Um, so, yeah, and, you know, specifically, we're going to be talking about how the Oculus Go performs in Allspace uh, and some of the some of the things that Go users have to deal with when they're in all space. Uh, so if you're wondering like why your Oculus room is always a mess or maybe the places you always dreamed about, we could talk about that stuff, that's fine, uh, but we're mainly gonna be focused on how these devices perform in all space because being on a Go, there are some challenges. And speaking of challenges, I've been in bed for the past year and a half to two years due to a medical condition. And you know, when my Go came, I was super excited about it, and I couldn't wait to get the thing on. And you remember that feeling when you first put on a virtual reality headset? That feeling how you're being transported to like another place? How amazing! Excuse me. How, another, how amazing it is! And what's that? Sorry about that. I just did an event before. <clears throat> this is wow. Just did an event before this, and you know, sometimes the uh, place games with the throat there. Uh, but yeah, so that feeling when you first put on that headset, it's like just being that uh, transported away the place feeling there's nothing like it and one of the first things i had done was like since i've been reading about all space i came in all space it was the first experience i had in vr and i came out of the load screen and i and i looked straight up into the sky and the sky looked a lot like what i remember the sky looking like and i was grateful for this i was so grateful in fact i started volunteering for all space right away and uh you know i want to you know be useful and help out you know and, and kind of give back to the community and you know when i started volunteering i found that you know my go wasn't lasting through the entire event my battery would die and I'd have to charge up, I'd have to track down the host and explain why I couldn't make it to the end. So I started asking questions like, how can I improve my experience, right? And I heard some things. I heard, like, for example, I was told that I wouldn't be able to work this laser pointer here, right? And it turned out that wasn't true, I actually could. Uh, and then I also heard that I wouldn't be able to work these slides here, right? I wouldn't be able to, you know, do this, like, you know, kind of like that. 
And it turned out I could do those things. I was also told, despite having a background presenting material like this, that I wouldn't be able to host events because my device wasn't reliable enough. That also turned out to be true. And I came to realize that there was a strong disconnect between what people thought it was like to be on the go and what the reality that experience actually was. And so, hey, how's it going, Joshua? Nice to see you. Um, so, yeah, there's a you know, big difference between actually being on the device and what people thought of it. Uh, and it turns out, you know, that there, it doesn't mean that there are you know, problems being on the go. There absolutely are. But uh, all of these problems, the majority of them are solvable. And the ones that aren't are at least manageable. You can vastly improve your experience while you're in here. You can do that by taking two approaches. You can work with what you already have on your head. We can do some stuff here today that's going to improve your experience. Uh, you can also upgrade your experience to exceed the limitations of your device. And those of you that have been here before know I can't stand this term. Fortunately, it's being used less and less in all space, and I like to think that we've got something to do with that. Uh, there's other terms going around that, like, uh, you know, a lesser device or a weaker device. And it's, it can be tough to hear this stuff all the time because, honestly, if every day somebody tells you, I hate your shirt, Bob, I can't stand your shirt, I just don't like it. If you hear that every single day, you start thinking, hey, it, it's not your shirt they're talking about. You're going to start thinking it's you they don't like. Uh, you know, but there's another term that gets thrown around all space an awful lot, and that's community. You, the individual, make up the community. Right? You have to think of your headset as the vehicle that brings you into the space. Right? The Go is a great uh, introduction to VR. It's a great way to get used to it. Uh, you know, like if I started out on a quest, then I, would, I, think, I don't think I would have stayed because there would have been a lot more dizziness having to worry about up and down vertical movement. But in 3 if you have a, a, you know, three degrees of freedom, if you're having a seated experience, it's much easier to acclimate the VR. Uh, and that way, I think that the, the, the Go is a fantastic device. And I feel about the Go way I think uh, most people feel about their first car. And speaking of which, you have to remember that you're not your headset any more than you are your house or your car or anything like that. All right, so it's important to keep that in mind when you hear terms like that being thrown around. All right, now let's work with what you already have. All right, let's uh, figure out what you can do right now to improve your experience at all space and make your device more reliable. Now, you may not realize this, but your device loses power even when it's not in use. And uh, so what this means is, you know, basically your app, your, your device is going to be checking for updates. It's going to be checking for updates on the firmware, checking for updates on your apps. And all these, uh, you know, different things it does when you're not using it will actually drain the power down. Now, it's uh, basically, uh, you know, your chief responsibility is going to make sure that you have 100% power as much as you can. Because when you come into all space and you only have 20% power, you're going to get like a flickering screen, things like that. You're going to want to keep that battery topped off. So it's going to require some advanced planning. So, for example, if, uh, you know, you're looking at the event schedule and you think, you know, oh, what am I going to do tonight in all space? And you go to allvr.com and you're looking at the schedule there. And you find, you know, you see there's go time and you're like, oh, I've heard great things about the host. I've heard he has amazing hair. He's got these cool glasses and he's, he's got this shirt that you're starting to see everywhere, right? You know, and you think I want to go to that event, right? Well, what you're going to want to do is about an hour before the event starts, you're going to want to plug in your device and make sure you've got a full charge on it, right? Then when you put the headset on, that's set, and don't do this now because if you disappear, I'm going to feel it. But if you, that center button that's right there, when you first turn it on, when you first put it on your head, and what you should do is press and hold that center button down. And if you do this around two or three seconds, you're going to see three buttons appear in the air in front of you. That middle button is the restart button. And if you press that, your device is going to restart. And it's going to clear out all the temporary files. Like, you know, uh, you know, maybe it's downloading updates. Maybe, uh, maybe your headset has a whole secret life you don't know about. Maybe it's got a pen pal on the other side of the world. But all of that's going to get cleared out when you restart your device. So you're coming in fresh. I like to think of it as clearing your mind. So you come in 100% power, right? You've cleared your mind, and now you start up all space and you head into that load screen, right? And when you step out, right, in all space, you may have noticed what an important role body language plays in here, right? Like if you're in an event like this and a moderator comes up to you and they go, they go like this, you know that means don't do that thing, right? Or maybe, you know, today somebody comes up on a stage and I'm going like this, you know, that means get off my stage. But you're going to find in all space occasionally there are going to be times where your, hand, your real world hand is right here, but your avatar's hand is up here. It doesn't match. And when it doesn't match, and I'm going like this, I'm doing this motion to get off the stage, what you'll see, what everyone else will see, is my hand going like this. And you're going to be thinking, I'm saying, hey, everybody, welcome to go time. And I'm not saying that. I'm saying they get off the stage. It's a dangerous place. Uh, so what can happen is, you know, when these don't match, right, your body language is going to be less convincing. Now, the way you can fix this is you're going to notice that on your control, you have right below your trackpad here, you have two buttons. Right here, you've got a button, and right here on the bottom, you've got a button. Don't press that bottom button, because if you do, you're going to disappear, and I'm going to feel it. But if you press and hold that bottom button down, so like right now, if you look straight ahead, this you can try. If you look straight ahead, and you press that bottom button down and hold it while keeping your hand out your side like this and extend it out, right? And you press and hold that button, you're going to see a white circle appear in the air, and then your hand's going to like snap into place. And when it does, 
take a good look at your hand and ask yourself, is this where my hand is in the real world? If it is, then you're good to go. If it's not, then keep doing this as many times as it takes till you feel comfortable. Only you can determine what's comfortable, right? So you do that, you're going to get a good feel for it. Now your body language is going to match yourself a little bit better, and it's going to be a lot more convincing. And that's a good thing. All right, now, uh, let's see. Now, occasionally in Old Space, you're going to notice that your menu, in your left menu wheel, is going to move around. Sometimes it'll go behind you. Sometimes it'll go right in front of you. And this can make you feel off balance when it's out of place because it's supposed to be your menu wheel, your avatar in the middle, and then any space buttons you might have, like the raise hand button or the, or the world editor or your host tools or things like that, will appear on your right-hand side with your avatar right in the middle. And when these menus move around, sometimes they can be hard to reach, uh, and also, other times it can make you feel off balance. But what you have to remember is on an Oculus Go, you always have your menu in your hand at all times. What you can do is on your controller, if you press this button just below the trackpad one time, your main menu is going to open up in front of you. And if you press it again, it'll close. If you're looking straight ahead when you do this, right, as soon as you come out of the menu, you're going to find that your menu wheel is back where it's supposed to be. All right, so if you look straight ahead and you press that menu button and then press it again to close it, you're going to reposition your menu wheel uh, to be in a proper place. All right. Now, one of the first things I learned when I was trying to figure out a solution to my battery problem is they told me that if I turned down my brightness, that my battery would last longer. And I didn't want to do it because I wanted to have the best graphic experience I could possibly have in all space. And to me, that meant having my brightness turned way up, like retina burning levels. It was painful, right? But I was having a great graphic experience, so I thought. So what I did was uh, I gradually turned down the brightness every time I came into all space. So I'd go to the main menu, and on the main menu, I'd go to settings, right? Uh, and then I'd go to, on the, this is the main Oculus menu, by the way. I went to the settings menu there, and I'd go to brightness, and I'd see this big blue bar. And every time I came into alt space, I turned that brightness down just a little bit more and a little bit more until finally there was no blue left on that bar. And my brightness was completely off. And I came into alt space, and I couldn't believe what I saw. I went to uh, an event space where they had this tree, and, that, and it was this tree where I learned how to moderate. And I looked at that tree, and like before the event started, and I couldn't get over how real it looked. It, the graphics were incredible. It was, it was just really amazing. It was totally worth doing this. So if you turn your brightness all the way down, you're going to enjoy better graphics. You're going to enjoy better performance. And most importantly, your battery is going to last longer. All right, so it's really a good thing to do. Um, now, also, you have uh, uh, one, of, one of the reasons that Go users get kind of a bad reputation is because our microphones are extremely sensitive. So what you're going to see is, like, let's say you're a new user and you're in a campfire and you're looking around and you see a group of avatars talking and you go to see what it's all about. As you approach them, before you say a word, right, what you're going to see is that group of avatars are going to turn around, they're going to face you, right, and they're going to come at you and go, are you on a go? Are you on a go? That can feel like really off-putting, but it turns out what they're experiencing is pretty off-putting too. See, what happens is our sensitive microphones, they pick up the sound, right, from the ear straps, and they get picked up in the microphone, and they project out into all space, and we can't hear the sounds we make in all space, right? Speaking of sounds, I thought, like, uh, you guys are muted. What's going on here? Okay. That apparently went off there. Okay. Since somebody eating in the background, my apologies, but that should be taken care of. Uh, all right, so what happens is, uh, you know, so basically your sound is coming out of your avatar and you're not always aware of the sounds that are being made. And what these people on this side are experiencing is they're standing here talking with their friends and all of a sudden they hear a voice and that voice is very familiar. And they turn and look and they see an avatar with their voice coming out of it, right? So effectively their voice is coming out of your avatar. And this can be kind of off-putting and unsettling, especially with the sound delay because it's what you said in the past. And it makes it harder for people to talk to you. What you can do is if you open up, if you, uh, on the top of your headset, you're going to notice on the left-hand side, there's two buttons. Uh, the leftmost button lowers the volume. The button next to that on the right-hand side raises the volume up. And whenever you press either of these, you're going to see these vertical bars appear in the air in front of you. Some will be solid. Some will be clear. What you're going for is to have four clear bars on the right-hand side, right? And this basically means that your volume is four ticks away from the maximum, all right? When it's like this, the sound isn't going to be picked up as easily all right, from the head straps that it won't be picked up as easily from the microphone. And you're going to find that people are nice to you, almost, nicer to you almost right away because they're not going to be hearing themselves coming out of you as easily. If people are making like loud noises in the background, that you're still going to hear that, but this definitely improves the experience. One surefire solution is to use headphones or inexpensive earbuds. My wife went to the library to get uh, an audiobook, and they gave her a, a pair of these free earbuds and she brought them home, and they suddenly mysteriously disappeared. A sad tragedy of that. And they, uh, good news, though, they reappeared shortly, a uh, short time after that. I captured my headset, and they remain there to this day, right? And, uh, you know, so I started wearing that, and after that, the only voice coming out of my avatar was my own. Occasionally, you'd still hear my wife saying, are you still on that thing? 
but you know, uh, I fixed that too because I got her, her headset and now she's, you know, in all space with us. Turns out she's a very talented world builder and a great moderator. She's fantastic and we're lucky to have her. Um, but yeah, so that's going to completely change your experience. And once I put on these earbuds, I started thinking, what else can I add to my device to improve my experience? Well, it turns out uh, there's a lot you can do and uh, that to fix some of the more common problems that you have on the go. And I came up with what I call a Go Plus experience. And I call it this because I didn't feel like a regular Go user anymore, sort of doing the things I'm about to talk about. Because I would go to like a very performance space and I'd see other Go users disappear into the ground. I see um, them just disappear as they crash, uh, but I would still be standing there. All right. And yeah, sometimes we'd get a little choppy, but I wouldn't crash as often uh, as other people seem to. Uh, and to talk about how I did this, I'm gonna need to talk about these products here. But I like to say that these are not the only products that work. If you try something else that works better for you, then you're doing it right. Uh, I only talk about these products because these are the ones I've directly used, but if you use something else, we'd like to hear about it uh, at the end of the event when we take questions. If you tried something else, you found a different solution to a problem, we want to hear about that too. Uh, but very briefly, the, uh, these products here, you have, um, and again, if you want to try any of these, you can go to altvr.com, and if you go where it says events in the upper left, right next to that's the word channels. If you tap or click on channels, you're going to uh, see a list of all the event channels that they have in Allspace, and you're going to notice that uh, the very last page has Raven Hall events on it, like it says up on the balcony. And if you click on that, you're going to see all these products there on our event page. That's a good way to get to it. Uh, also, you'll see Join Discord if you want to help us out with putting on these kind of events. And you'll also see the subscribe button, right? The subscribe button, every time that goes up, we feel good. It lets us know that you like our content. It lets all space know that you enjoy what we're doing. And we don't get paid to do this. So really, every time we see that number goes up, it just, it just feels good. So we appreciate that when that happens. So yeah, press subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Uh, but now these products here, you have the Anchor Battery Pack, Anchor Power Core Battery Pack. Uh, this will actually last 16 hours, right? So theoretically, you could stay in VR for 16 hours. There's two USB ports on it. Uh, and I figured this would solve my power problem, right? Uh, now, Oculus says it's not a good idea to use your headsets while they're plugged in, uh, but they say it is okay to use an external power pack. So I figured this would solve my battery issues. Uh, and when I got it, I'd heard that a lot of people were having trouble, trouble with their charges, uh, their devices not charging as effectively as they used to. And you'll notice when you plug that cord in, it's very tight and all that wear and tear, it can actually eventually loosen the connections and they won't be making proper contact. Uh, contact. So what I did was I got this MagSafe cable here and with these tips, they plug into your headset and the other end, the USB part, plugs into the battery and it's held in place by this magnetic connector. And this ends up being a great safety feature because if you turn your head and it pulls on the cable, the cable will actually just fall down and you can just reach down, pick it up, hold it to the side of your headset. You don't even take the thing off and it'll kind of snap into place with this thunk sound. If your microphone's open, your friends are gonna hear this, they're gonna say, what was that? And you'll be like, that's power, that's what that is. And that's how, you don't have to say that, I just found that it was fun to say. And you can do that too if you wanna let that continue there. Um, but yeah, another thing you can do is when I did this, I, it had solved my power issues and I was lasting longer in all space, right? I turned down my brightness, I was lasting longer, making it to the end of events. And then I was uh, at this battery on and then I was staying in all space for a long time but at this point, I started to discover a new problem, and some of you are probably familiar with this, the overheating issue, right? We start overheating, you know, like basically every half hour, but at the faceplate on the Oculus Go, which is supposed to cool it, it's installed by hand, so everybody experiences something differently with this. Um, for me, I, I overheated every half hour. I knew one person that overheated every two minutes. One of the first Go times we ever had, there was someone in the audience who overheated so badly that the side of their headset actually melted. It became deformed. It was all pushed in. And this scared me, right? So I wanted to come up with some kind of a solution. And I had heard that some people were putting ice packs on their headsets. Now these ice packs, um, honestly, the condensation, moisture in your headset, you know, water, and this is on your face, water and electricity, I don't think that's a great combination. And this person that I know who did this, they went through two headsets, all right, while working through this. I don't think it's a great solution, but this is, this is an AC Infinity uh, USB fan, mini fan. It's really small, it fits in the palm of your hand. Right, and uh, what you have to do is you can attach this to your headset. Uh, some people use string. For me, I, I my wife had these uh, hair bands, and they suddenly went missing, and they reappeared on my headset a short time later, just kind of like those earbuds. And what happened is I put them on the straps, and I wrapped the other end around these uh, these round feet here, and I put it so the silver part was facing the faceplate. And what I needed a place to test it, right? And around the time that I got it, I was monitoring the meditation event. And every time I was there, I would overheat exactly 20 minutes into the experience. It's an incredible space. It's like got this fog and the sun coming down through it. You got these bowls with the smoke coming up, very realistic, but I would always overheat 20 minutes in. So I figured 
this would be a great place to test it. And it arrived on the day that I was going to moderate for it, so it worked out perfectly. And so I put it all on, and if you've ever seen Star Trek, you've got the Borg, you know, with all those wires hanging out. That's what it felt like. I had the battery hooked up. I had the fan hooked up, you know. And I went in, and I went up to the host, and I had the fan go, and I asked him, can you hear my fan? And he says, no. So I turned it up a little. You know, it's got three settings, right? I turned up the medium. Uh, and, and I asked him, can you hear this? And he says, oh, a little bit, but it's not too bad. So then I turned it up to full blast, and he goes, well, I can definitely hear that. You sound like you're in a wind tunnel. So what I did was I turned it all the way down the well, and I never had to turn it up again. And this is what happened. I went uh, through the event, and 20 minutes came and went, and I didn't overheat once, right? I made it to the end of the event without overheating, and I wanted to see, I wanted to test it, how far could I go? So I went to another event, I didn't overheat at all. And then I went to another, a third event, that's three events in a row, and I didn't overheat once, right? And then I went back to my home space, I hung out with some friends, and then for the very first time, I left all space because I was tired. I didn't leave all space because I had to. I didn't leave all space because I ran out of power. I didn't leave all space because I overheated. I left all space because I actually wanted to, right? And that was the very first time that happened. It wouldn't be the last, though, because after that, my device became super reliable. I started hosting events. I started becoming at, very active in moderation, very active in the community. And uh, it was just a complete, completely different experience. And I can't recommend doing this enough. It solves most of the problems. But there were still some issues, and these are more annoyances than actual problems, and these can be managed. All right, one well, of the first ones I'm going to talk about is a movement issue. So let's say that, you know, uh, you know, I turn to say something to Hummingbird here on the left, right? And I'm standing in the campfire, we're all hanging out. I go to turn left. When said turn left, I go straight. And that was weird, huh? So I go to turn right to say something to Razin over here. But instead of turning right, I go straight, all right? And now I can't see either one of them. So I go to back up and I hit the bottom of the controller. And instead of backing up and going backwards, I go straight again. I start to panic and I start pressing the controller all over the place. And what happens is I keep going straight. The next thing you know, I'm standing inside of an admin. There is nothing more frightening than standing inside of an admin. I saw the past. I saw the future. I saw things I can't even talk about. What I can talk about is how to manage this. All right. Now, your touchpad is sensitive to heat. It's sensitive to moisture and, of course, touch because it's the touchpad, right? Uh, and so you need to reset this. And the way you do this is by taking your thumb and actually gently, without pushing down, gently swiping it across from right to left or left to right, doesn't matter which way, and cr gently cross across, cross it to the other side. And then when you get there, lift your thumb up in the air completely off the controller and move it to the other side, and then come down and swipe across again. And so you basically do this two or three times, you go swipe, 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 and then when you come down on the third time, you move in a direction that you want to go, and you'll be moving in the way that you want to. All right, and this is a great way to reset that. So if you find yourself moving in directions you don't want to, just go swipe, 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 and you know that should take care of it. Um, also, what's gonna happen occasionally is, this is usually gonna happen when you're in a rush. So you have to host an event, so you have to moderate an event, but for whatever reason, you're in a hurry to get into all space. Maybe you have a hot data, I've heard that can happen in here, no judgments, right? Um, but what'll happen is, you're gonna put your headset on, you're gonna see a notice that says, can't find controller, right? And you know you put a fresh battery in that last night, because that can happen if you have like a, your battery and your controller is low or, you know, it's run out, then you're going to need to change that and it won't see it. Let's say you have a fresh battery in there. You're still going to occasionally get that note. Maybe your controller found out about your headset secret life and been happy about it and they're no longer speaking, right? But for whatever reason, you have this note. You don't even have to take your headset off to fix it. What you want to do is this bottom button that's on your controller, right? And this uh, middle button here, right? These two buttons here, if you press and hold them down at the same time, Right. I like to call this doubling down. Right. So if you double down by pressing on it, right, what will happen is a little white light is going to appear on the trackpad right about here. Now, you're not going to see that white light uh, if you're wearing your headset, and you won't need to. Because after about four seconds, when you lift your thumb off, off these two buttons, right, what you are going to see is your hand appear. And then you're going to open up all space, you're going to jump into that load screen, and you're going to go, man, I am so glad I went to go time. That Michael Forrest, he knew what he was talking about. Right? And now I get to be on time for my event. All right? So that'll solve that if that happens to you. Um, also, occasionally you're going to notice that in all space that your screen is going to go dark. Now, all space has made a lot of changes to increase performance, so this happens a lot less, but it still can occur. And the reason that this happens is because all the stuff in this room, all of you fine people, this rug that we're set, some of us are standing on, this, this big display, that moon outside, these speakers, right? All this stuff goes in your headset. So, like, maybe... Um, after this event, you go to the campfire, right? And while at the campfire, you're not thinking about go time anymore, but your headset still is, right? Right now, in your headset, right, Shrub is in there, right? And he's hanging out in there. And when you go back to the campfire, he's still in your headset, all right? And what's going to happen is when that memory fills up, 
right? Your screen will go dark. But good news, if your microphone's open, your friends will be able to hear you. So all you have to say is, you know, my screen's gone dark, I can't see, I'll be right back. Then you press that bottom button on your controller, all right? And then you'll be able to exit all space, you'll be able to restart it from there. And one of the ways you can deal with this is to get ahead of it before it happens. So when this event's over and you turn to your friend and say, yeah, what do you want to do now? And your friend says, let's go to the campfire. And you go, well, okay, I'll, I'll catch up with you in just a minute. And then what you do is you press that bottom button, think of it like as an eject button. You eject out of all space, you press quit, and then you restart the app, you come back in, you open up your menu, you see where your friend is, and you hit go to. The whole process takes less than a minute, but this is a way of getting it before it happens. It's basically like you're manually clearing your memory out. And it's a good way, it's a good way to do that. All right, now, uh, let's see. I see that I'm, I'm over time. I have some uh, tips on world building. Is, if anybody wants to hear uh, anything about the world building, just let, let me see some emojis, because it's going to be going over by a couple minutes. Anybody? Otherwise, we can just skip over it. All right, I see one, two. Okay, a few people, all right. All right, so I'll try to go through it quickly. All right, so here's what we have. Uh, I go to help moderate the Building Worlds event in Allspace every week, just about, and uh, I hear an awful lot of Go users in that event, and they always say that they can't build on an Oculus Go, it's too hard, and it simply isn't true. There's a lot of really great uh, built worlds that have been built on the Oculus Go in Allspace, uh, but why do people get this impression? Well, when you first start messing around with the world builder, what you're going to notice is you'll notice that the objects that you grab are swinging around kind of wildly, and it can take a while to figure out that it's actually your head that's moving the object. And I don't know about you guys, but it's awfully hard to keep a level head in any reality, let alone a virtual one, right? So what you want to do is, is you, in your world editor, you're going to open that up. You're going to see there's a white checkbox on the bottom that says lock rotation. And when you check this box, uh, what will happen now is if you squeeze and release the uh, trigger button on your controller on an object that you want to edit, if you squeeze and release it one time quickly, now you'll be able to adjust the rotation of that. And when you get it somewhere you like, you squeeze and release that trigger again, and it's going to kind of lock it into place. Now, if you squeeze and hold that trigger on the object, now you'll be able to move the object up, down, left, and right. Also, if you swipe your thumb across the, uh, the trackpad there, if you swipe it from left to right, it's going to change the size or the scale of the object. If you swipe it up or down, it's going to push the object away or bring it closer to you. Or you can manually carry it to where you want it to go. So let's say I want to take this laser pointer, all right, and let's find a place to put it. Let's put it on this railing over here. Right, so we put it on this railing right here, like that. All right, and you'll notice that it's kind of hanging off. Like this is the real world; it would have fallen on the floor, right? This isn't a great spot for it. But on the Oculus Go, you just have to get it close enough, right? And what you'll do is you go into your world editor and you look at your items list, and you'll see on the items list you look for the laser pointer, and there'll be a cogwheel next to it. When you press that cogwheel, it's going to open up a panel, and there's going to be all these numbers on it. There's going to be numbers for rotation. There's going to be numbers for position. Uh, position. There's also going to be numbers for scale or the size of it. And what you'll find is what you do is you're going to play with these numbers, right? So, like, let's say that the Z on this is 20, and I change it to 19, and what happens is it jumps down like that, right? And now I know any object in this room that I lower the Z value on is going to move in that direction toward the screen. That means if I raise it up to 21, it would have gone that way, right? And then in this way, by playing with these numbers in, in small increments, you can get a sense for what it does. So the next object I place is going to go quicker, and quicker and quicker. And I know that little keyboard they give us a type on, or it can be a little cumbersome to use that, right? But you know what? It's a lot like playing a video game. When you first start playing a video game, you're thinking about the controls, right? You're thinking about what buttons to push. But in a week, you're not thinking about the controls at all. You're thinking about saving the world, or you're thinking about crushing your enemies. That's a great way to spend the Wednesday, right? And uh, yeah, so the more you do it, the faster it goes, and the faster your world to get done. At the end of this event, we take everybody flying uh, to a place called the Raven Hall Flight Academy. And that was built in less than two days on an Oculus Go. There's also another portal there that takes you to, um, to Lake Ravenholm. And that took a little bit longer because that world is huge. But that was also built on an Oculus Go. And it really gives you a good idea of what Go users are capable of, right? And it's not just those two worlds. It all takes a ton of worlds that were built by very talented uh, Go users. And there's probably some in this room. So I'm looking forward to seeing, seeing you work there. All right, now, we are going to be taking your questions. Uh, before we do, I'm going to open up the panel here. So you're going to see, as if by magic, a raise hand button appear on your lower right. So what you can do is, if you want to get on the list, just press the raise hand button, and I'm going to see your name appear. You don't have to press it again. I'll take you on and off the list. Uh, so only press it the one time if you have any questions or you want to relay a solution that you found or maybe an accessory that you've tried or something like that. You can just press that button and get on the list. And while we're waiting for it to fill up, if you're on Twitter and you'd like to follow us, you can find us at Ravenhall 
at underscore underscore uncanny valley. Uh, that's actually two underscores. I know it looks like one, but it's actually two. And uh, yeah, and usually also uh, we use Samus. And it's mentioned it up there. And that's been broken for a while. We're trying to fix it. Uh, so just a quick show of emojis. Did anybody learn anything new here today? Let's me know to keep this thing going. Yeah. Anybody learn anything today that you didn't know before? All right, cool. All right, that's good to see. All right, awesome. Uh, all right, so let's see. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions at all? All right, I'm not seeing anybody go on the list. So, uh, well, if you have any questions, what we're going to do is we're going to head up this ramp here. We're going to go into that blue circle at the top, so, and we'll enter the load screen. We'll come at the Ravenhall Flight Academy, and if you have any questions, we can take them there and teach you to fly or just look around the world if you want to check it out. All right, well, uh, thank you for joining us today, and if you've learned anything at all, uh, please share it with everyone you come in contact with. So if you're in the campfire and somebody says, I'm overheating all the time, right, uh, and you know a solution because you were here today, you can direct to our event page or you can tell them about our event. Uh, and, you know, by helping each other out, that's how we keep this thing going. But, yeah, come fly with us, and thanks for being a great audience, and I'll see you all next time. Just come on up here and go up into that blue light, and I'll see you all later. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. Thank you.